Good morning, good morning, good morning. We are back again for a, another segment of the Comerica Business Sense Boot Camp. And I, I'm not going to say it this time. I, I know I say something every time. I said it before. So you, you're not going to get me to say it this time. But we are back again. And we just want to just welcome everybody to um, this particular segment we're, we're, we are going to have a great and a very dynamic conversation, but before we get started, you know the drill. If you've been with us before, if you are new to us, hi and welcome. And we just want to get you real comfortable before we dive into today's conversation. So part of the behind the scenes, the reason why the boot camp is even a thing is because COVID-2019 has affected communities across the globe. And so we decided to put together 12 bi-weekly workshops in partnership with Comerica Bank, which are designed for nonprofit leaders, providers, and corporate professionals being proactive in increasing their knowledge and developing their skills as we navigate this post-COVID world together. I am your host, A. Markle Blair, partnership strategist and founder of Discover Her Worldwide Incorporated, which is a 501c3 nonprofit organization headquartered in Phoenix, Arizona. Our mission is designed to bridge generational gaps between diverse groups of women. Now, pre-Rona, we would do this through in-person professional and personal development experiences, such as conferences, trainings, um, as well as other professional development experiences as seminars. As we navigate this post-COVID world at Discover Her, we are cultivating virtual experiences such as this to teach the fundamentals that may have been missed, as well as equip um, each of you, the founders, the business owners with actionable steps that you can apply to your business and life immediately. In addition to that, what this does, these opportunities give you and um, put you in the space to grow your network. And so again, we are just super, super excited. And we wanna thank Summer um, with Comerica Bank for just seeing the vision, partnering with us and bringing this to life. So we just have to take a moment, Summer, thank you so much for being here and for being present. How are you today? Thank you, I'm good, thank you so much. We're excited to be here, just like always. I mean, it's a pleasure uh, working with Discover for Worldwide and what you do for the community is absolutely amazing. I mean, that's why we, we partner with certain community organizations because there's a pulse in the community. As a bank, we just can't reach, we don't know. Mm -hmm. And uh, allowing us to, to kind of come in and there, there's really, it's not that there's a filter, but it's just kind of open, you know, open information. What do I have to do? What's going on? COVID's new for everyone. So we, we typically have a normal business boot camp or business series that takes six months. And that's kind of understanding your foundation of a business, how to run a business, kind of the odds and ends of things that they don't teach you in school or even when, you know, you start your business. So, uh, but this is like, how do I keep my business surviving during COVID? How do I, how do I look at um, training people during COVID? What, what am I supposed to say? What am I supposed to do? Um, how can I still gain sales? during this time. And we've gone over so many different things, especially for nonprofit owners, because it's completely different for a for-profit or product service than, than it is for a nonprofit. And, yeah. and that's kind of what we're going with. I mean, we're training, we're doing new things, but we want to see what's going with you guys so we can kind of alter and shift to, for what we need to do within a, the community itself. So it's the boot camp is really a concentrated version of our business since series, but it is specific to now. It's specific to 2020. It's specific to kind of like last week type thing. Everything's updated and new because my topics from three months ago are different than the topics that, that are happening today. So um, we are excited for Troy to be here and we'll certainly let him introduce himself, but there's so many things that we are gaining from all of the, the people who are doing it right, right now. So that's what I'm excited about. And um, thank you for allowing us to be here. We're here for the community. If you have any questions, I'm going to kind of sit and hang out in the background and give the corporate uh, interpretation of anything and everything. So thank you so much, Marga. Absolutely. And again, thank you just so much for just being part of the vision. And that's one of the main things that we seek out with Discover Her is we don't want to just partner with people who are just going to cut us a check. That's great. The money can go, you know, a long way in, in most cases. However, we want to make sure that we are partnering with people who are willing to get their, their you know, their feet dirty, their, their hands dirty, and really be a part of the development process. So again, we just thank you so much, um, Comerica Bank, for just, again, seeing the vision and being part of the process. So today, 
today, today, today, today, we are at segment 10. I can't believe we've already, we're already almost done, but today's conversation is around sales consistency, how to be consistent selling and all of the above. And so we have a really, really special guest. I met this gentleman earlier this year. Um, I have to give a shout out to my amazing husband because my husband is actually the one who introduced us together. Um, and I will share a little bit about who he is, but I, I really, again, want to take a moment to just speak to this because there is so much power in collaboration. There's so much power in connection and just introducing people in your network to others you know can benefit from each other. And so when I say I have to give a shout out to my husband, he knew that there were some things that I wanted to tweak and pivot within my business. And he came across this challenge and he said, hey, babe, you need to join this. I joined and it was a dynamic and a transformational experience. And from there, we stayed connected and Summer and I decided that we were going to put together this dynamic boot camp. And I said, him, I need to bring this guy to the table. I need to bring this guy to the conversation. And so we are here with today's facilitator, Troy Hoffman. And Troy is the founder of three companies to the million plus mark, two to the five million plus mark, and one to the 10 million plus mark. And let me be very clear, that is the $10 million mark, to be very clear on what we're saying here, with degrees in multinational finance and performance management psychology as well. Troy is a certified master practitioner in NLP. He is a wake up warrior certified coach and a new, he has a numerous of other certifications. He has taken his knowledge to thousands of students worldwide, reaching them how, teaching them how to scale their organization and their lives at the same time. His heart and passion is for developing leaders, which is why he's here with us today. And his teachings, his lessons, his coaching leaves those he serves inspired and challenged to take their lives and business to the very next level. Troy, thank you so, so much for being here with us today. How are you? That was quite a mouthful. You did great, Margo, like reading that out loud. That's awesome. Absolutely. Absolutely. And again, Troy, thank you so much. Um, you know, I, I know I just shared your bio, but, you know, just take a second, right? Like the bios always fluff as a professional speaker myself. They read the bio and then I get on stage and I'm like, I promise you, I'm not that uptight. My bio is great. It says what I do, but I'm really a down to earth person. I, I'm a simplest. And, and so just, you know, take a moment and, and as we, before, right before we dive in, just introduce yourself um, from your perspective and, and just honestly share why you decided to say yes to be part of this particular topic on sales consistency. So I was lucky enough to kind of grow up around entrepreneurs. Um, I was lucky enough to have a grandmother that she built a incredible company from scratch out of her literally apartment, like one bedroom apartment with her husband and turned it into this clothing company with a mermaid brand in like the late forties, early fifties. And she took it up and down the East Coast of, you know, New Jersey, New York, Florida. She had all these like uh, boutiques, had her own line of like high fashion women's clothing line. And I kind of grew up with that. And then my dad was kind of the same. He had like an electric contracting business and became a chiropractor. And then became a, a neurologist, internal medicine and clinical nutritionist. Had this passion for helping the world and kind of grew up around this like small time entrepreneur world. And I was lucky enough that like my grandmother got me in the biographies at a really young age and just kind of learning and see what interests me was like always these world leaders, you know, reading stuff about Nixon or these past entrepreneurs uh, across the board. And so I was lucky enough to kind of grow up in this world that I was able to start my first business around 18. Um, it was kind of like uh, basically it was a Christian t-shirt company marketing that market, doing all the shirts for everybody from youth camps to Catholic churches to like non-denominational world. I mean, we just, we just hit the market and then we had money to go after the surf and skate lines and had like an online website by like 95. We built out shopping cart technology that kind of brought us some people that wanted us to build shopping carts before they were free, like Shopify now. Wow. And we built something called value web and we started doing like larger contracts back in the day. 
Um, you know, and then I, I did, I had no idea what I was doing. I had no idea there were such things as taxes back then. Okay. And so I, I literally had no coaches, no entrepreneurial coaches, um, no real mentors that like, I tried going to like the local score and they, all they did was run NASA and they ran giant companies. And it was useless to me as an entrepreneur running a smaller organization. Um, I got myself in a ton of debt trying to build out the, the tech company and doing these large projects and hiring people. And then people decided not to pay the bills. The internet bubble came. People thought the internet was going to go away in Florida. And so I went bankrupt at 24 years old. And I think that's kind of why now I'm so passionate about serving entrepreneurs, serving people that are running small organizations, um, serving people that they haven't, don't have the right mentors, don't have the right skill sets, haven't, haven't had people pour into their life the true tools, tactics, and techniques that are going to be transformational to take them to that next level that they really want to go and help them really craft and hone their vision so when they wake up, all their energy, all their purpose, all their might is able to be executed on a daily basis and accomplish what they want to accomplish in their lives. Because a lot of things, a lot of people that haven't done it can't teach it. If you haven't gone through it, you don't know it. If you, if, you haven't, if you can't feel the pain of the process, you'll never have the possibility of the future vision to accomplish. And I think that's kind of why I'm doing it and do a lot of business coaching now. A lot of it's basically, I don't take any money for myself. It just funds the marketing and the production of more products and paying for the team. Um, and I don't take any money out of, out of like all the coaching fees or any of the courses we're selling for myself, but I want to make sure we just keep getting it out there to people. We just keep helping give, give away the truth of what, what it really takes to run, build an organization, you know, how to keep the revenue coming in, how to deal with the pain, the pain that you experience in the process on a daily basis. And so that's, that's kind of really where I'm at right now. We've got two companies, uh, running simultaneously in the third right now, um, we got presidents in both companies. They're crushing it. They're incredibly doing an, an amazing dynamic job, just applying these principles, just keep applying these things and building these things to the next level. So that's my intro. Margo, that's all I got. No, I love it. And and here's the thing. So I, I, I forgot to preface everyone who's, who's tuning in as well as those who are watching the replay. Every single guest facilitator brings the heat. So if you are not ready, buckle up, pause, get some water. Um, because again, we are going to be having a very, very dynamic conversation. And I have to be really honest and transparent with you guys. This conversation is not, um, will make people uncomfortable. It will make people uncomfortable because we are requiring growth. We are requiring discipline. We are requiring accountability for those who are with us. Again, not just today, but those who have been journeying with us through this boot camp series. And each conversation has kind of continued to just build upon each other and build upon each other. And what we've really been seeing through these conversations, Troy, because I know you're just here with us for this one, but we started the first conversation talking about structuring your business for success. That was the very, very first conversation. And then we kind of continue to peel back the layers of businesses where we're looking at um, being a well-branded leader. We talked about project management and we had to break that into two separate parts. We then talked about strategic planning. We had an introduction to um, the fundamentals of finance where we were talking about having a healthy relationship with money, which is something that we are gonna talk about again today. And then we did talk about systems, setting up your systems that work for your specific business. And then we talked about simplifying your sales process. And now again, we then went and talked about outsourcing, hiring team members, and we can, and now we're here today, again, on the 10th segment, and we're talking about sales consistency. I wanted to take you, Troy, as well as everyone else, just quickly through that timeline of the conversations we've had today. And I just pull back to, to really build on those conversations for today. Fundamentals of finance, in a sense, having a healthy relationship with money and simplifying your sales process. Troy, the first question that I really just wanna ask you is, what does having a healthy relationship with money look like for you? And how does that correlate with, this, with selling in your business? 
I don't know if I'd answer it the same way probably some people would, but no, that's perfect. Um, I, and it's funny because I don't really think about money as much as it's just like a number that I've got to have to make the next thing happen. So it always comes back to the vision mm. and, and kind of like, what do you want to accomplish? Right. And why are you doing it? And I know that people always, it's, it sounds so corny because everyone talks about it, but if you're not hyper, hyper clear on your vision and it's like deeply embedded inside of you, the money will never come. Oof. And, and, it, and, and it's not about for me about like trying to have or store more money. It's about this, like, what can I accomplish? What can I, who can I impact? How can I build something that lasts? How do I build something that's impactful? How do I build something that's game changing or life changing or impactful in a specific way? Right. So that's like the first thing to me is like, you know, it, it's just this tool with the, with money and marketing, you can make anything happen. So the people that win the game and almost anything have the money and have the marketing to keep putting out whatever their vision is and being clear in the vision. And so, and, it, and when you're clear in the vision, you can easily attract things. Yeah. You've got that passion. You've got the purpose. You, you are clear on the, on the specifics of what you're going to do and why. And, and then other people just naturally jump on. If, it's, if they're buying your product, if they're buying your service, if they're investing into your nonprofit and donating money, it's, it's all the same thing. So when, you're, when the thing is super hyper clear and it's inside your heart, mind, and soul is when, when you just grow things and make things happen out of nothing. And, and you, and you got to keep that purpose going, even when it's hard, even when you don't feel like getting up, even when you don't feel like doing the call, even when you don't feel like anything, because you're so clear on what you're trying to go for and grab and pull into your life and, and manifest these things and push out this vision into the world. And so that's the first thing of money. The second thing is really understanding how money works and not being so attached to the outcome of it all the time or attached to your value. If you have a lot or nothing, it doesn't matter. It's who you are on the inside that matters. And that's what allows for organizations to grow. That's allows for, for vision to grow. That allows for people to grow around you by you acknowledging that you're going after this and rising up to that next level. It attracts other people that want to rise with you and the money will follow. And then learning how to be a steward of that money, learning how to be good at that is difficult. Learning the P&Ls, learning the balance sheet, learning how to understand, do we want to show profit or not? What are we trying to accomplish right now in our business? How much are we willing to keep pushing and gambling into building the infrastructure, building the systems, building out the people, hiring the right people, building out the HR systems, building out the financial systems, building out the marketing systems? How much are you willing to keep letting go and pushing back into the business so you're unattached to really the money for yourself? It's, it's got to be so much more about this vision. If you really want to accomplish something great, if you're just about making money, you'll make some, but it's never the people that are the most successful that I get to hang out with and EO and YPO and all these entrepreneur groups and all these networking groups and masterminds where there are people that have huge nonprofits and, and are running very fast, scalable nonprofits and impacting people. And, you know, being a part of these groups, you meet these amazing individuals um, I've got one friend, she's only 26 now, um, and she basically doesn't take any money for the nonprofit. She's built a five-story um, hospital in Africa. Um, I've been working with her and, and involved with like kind of coaching and giving the videos to her and talking through the, the tough scenarios that only people that run organizations will really get. And just, I mean, she's built this whole um uh, network marketing business specifically to fund her life so her and her husband work completely free building this amazing hospital impacting kids in africa and, and it's i mean talk about the uh, like high end quality medical care impacting people with camp cancer and all kinds of diseases and, and uh, babies that have been abandoned and it's just it's an amazing thing and she's attracted all these people to her because she was so clear in the vision and even all the people that said she couldn't do it she did it at 21 she was able to launch this thing and it is incredibly successful so i think part of that's that's kind of like my answer about money i'm not sure if that makes sense margo but you know no, I think, and I, you just, you said sh several really, really dynamic points. And so I'm trying to, I'm like, do I want to ask this now? Or I want to ask it later, but it's, it's a big point where you mentioned that the, this individual has the nonprofit, but then she also 
has the network marketing. And I can't speak to this enough where a lot of people are trying to start a venture, but it's one venture. And that's where this, this battle comes with money. Like I need money. I need money right now. I need money right, right now. And it, it, the, the passion ends up fading away, right? Because it's more of a passion project that they're working on. And so kind of one of the things that, that I did want to, like I said, I want us to have this conversation on is just really sharing it with everyone. And I'm going to speak something and then I'm going to ask you the direct question. A lot of the times people are looking for opportunities, um, need to be looking for opportunities to build on those. It's not just about building your passion project and not seeing any profit. It's about disrupting a particular market, dominating the industry and taking your proceeds and stewarding well. You just said that, you just said stewarding, um, stewarding well. And what I mean by that is your passion project that can now sustain itself while growing from organic support from donors you've met along the way. And so I really wanted to share that and, and we can break that down for, for anybody who needs that to be broken down. But Troy, specifically the question that's in here is identify one thing should be right if it's not the passion project to build that for the money that we that some people need how do we identify what that other venture should be to build up to scale quickly whatever can you can you talk us through that process well, i think i think the challenge in the nonprofit world because I'm, I'm i'm on a few boards um coach a lot of nonprofits actually just had another conversation somebody found me online uh wanted to start something for the artists in the music industry that aren't, aren't really the money makers, but they're kind of trying to play gigs and they've got um, mental health issues from all the drugs or all the abuse or all the, the challenges they've gone through. And that is their specific passion. So we had a long conversation about, um, she has one person that is higher up in the music industry that was willing to put some money into it. She's like, well, where do I go with this? Right. Mm. But she's like, I also need money to live too for herself. And it was like, and part of it was like kind of having her decide like, well, would you have a salary out of this or would you try to raise money somewhere else? And what can you actually do now to make money? Mm. So uh, my friend Tomas Lairs has done all kinds of odd jobs and he built Florida abolitionist society, which is, started it years ago before human trafficking became a really big conversation in the country. And Tomas is, is dynamic. If anyone gets a chance to be around him, learn from him, he's working with the federal, uh, the Florida government, the federal government on all these projects around human trafficking. He's built a great uh, nonprofit. He's crushing it. Um, and, he's, and he's been passionate about it for a long time, but he's also suffered in trying to be able to make enough money and, and had and spent years doing all kinds of other things till he was able to get it to actually earn an income and it was stable enough and running enough and there's enough money coming in and they had enough events throughout the year and enough donate donations and enough functional outreach things where the money's just not coming in and it's actually showing results. Mm -hmm. And then when the organization starts showing results and people buy into the results, more money just comes to people, right? They're like, oh, I want to be a part of this thing, right? I think at some point, the organization needs to become self-sustaining enough to operate. So in the beginning, you've got to find a way to have some type of money to live off of and figure out what does that look like for you? And then from there, how do, how do we then make sure we're getting the results in the nonprofit to attract the money because people want to be part of something successful. They want to be people across the world. I was in a, a, 20, a room of 20 people with um, one guy's a billionaire. Another guy's probably worth a couple hundred million doing these coaching, little mini coaching things for entrepreneurs. The average, there was probably a, at least seven or eight guys had their own little like private jets, not planes, but jets in that room. And they were talking about, you know, the Falcon seven, this, and, and there's another guy in the room that uh, builds up these like trust for these nonprofits so they can give money away. And a lot of it is like, how much money can we give back? How, who do we actually help? How do we actually use this money for the greater good in the best way? And, they, and, they, and there's, their conversation was this. It's like, they have a struggle finding organizations that are legit and impactful enough that they want to be a part of. Where, where when they look at the budget, they actually look at the spreadsheet and where the money's going, they want to be able to say, well, Where's all this money going? And what are the level of impact this organization is really having? And it's not just a giant staffing cost. 
And I think that's why Amy's been so successful in Africa and so much money keeps flowing in there because she's got massive results, massive, massive results. And she's not taking anything from herself and it just keeps attracting more and more and larger donations. Someone just, I think she was given the opportunity. I don't know what she's doing with it yet, but you know, two more hospitals to take over and run. And, and she's getting all these opportunities at such a young age and she's just doing the work. I mean, she, she grinds, she does it 12, 16, 18 hour days, seven days a week, she doesn't stop, you know? She makes sure she works out, she makes sure she eats healthy, she makes sure she spends time with her husband, spends time with her adopted daughter, you know? She spends time with her friends still, but she builds it into her schedule. So she's constantly overflowing with energy, constantly overflowing with joy, constantly overflowing and casting the vision, every conversation of what she's trying to accomplish, sharing the results, making the videos, following all the specific points that you talked about before in the last nine conversations. She's What she did great is she just applied everything. She learns and applies, learns and applies, learns and applies, and doesn't stop, doesn't question it, just does the work daily. So I don't know if that answers your question, but no, it does. It does. Because here's the thing. Everything that we're talking about is there's there's so many different layers, right? Because again, a lot of the people who are who are on with us um, live, um, we have a number of people who are joining us on Facebook as well. The conversation is that we have people from various sectors. We have people who are in the nonprofit space, but they manage their, they operate in different industries, even though they are nonprofit organizations. And I, I think when I first broke into non, um, um, into the nonprofit world, that was back in 2017, I was actually working at a nonprofit organization. And I really, I didn't know it was a nonprofit in the beginning because it was this big company, 200 plus employees. And I like to know, I was going to say I'm not the best employee working for somebody else's company, but there's reasons for that, not conversation for today. However, when what I like to, to do is I like to peel back the layers and I'm like, okay, who's making what? If I'm making this, like, what are you making at the top? And I'm the one doing majority of the work. That's my thing. You don't have to do that if you don't want to. However, um, when I started doing all of this research, I learned that the the founder of the organization, I think, was made or the not the founder, the um, president, the current president of the organization, was making around two hundred plus thousand a year. And I'm like, how the heck is this possible with a nonprofit organization? I thought they got to give all their money away and they have to do all of these things, but. That was the first time where I realized that nonprofits are businesses and they should be operating and running as such. And so I just wanted to take that this moment to really encourage the founders who are hearing you, Troy, because this is not, like I said, this is not going to be um, how to select your idea to start your business. This is to the founders, the business owners, the entrepreneurs who have an existing business They've been in business for two, five, seven years, and they did not lay a solid business foundation the first time around. That's the purpose of these conversations to really help you get clear on, yes, you have something that can really make significant impact in the lives of those you're called to lead, but there's some fundamental, some key fundamental elements that are missing in your business structure, in your strategy, whether that's your marketing or your sales, and we have to get those things in order for you to not only see that impact, but for you to become profitable. And again, it may be stepping outside of your business and not just solely looking at your current organization to drive those funds or to drive that profit. And so again, yes, the goal is to have a profitable business. The goal is to make money so you can make that impact. But I want us to make sure that we are looking at these things from an objective standpoint. Your current situation, where you are right now, begin to look at it objectively identify your gaps, and then connect with people, individuals like Troy, people who've been there and done it before to really, and, and when I say this, I'm not just asking for a hand out. It's a conversation where you need a hand up to get to your next level. You want to make sure you are connecting with people who have journeyed this, this journey before. And so Troy, to this point, You've built five multi-million dollar companies from scratch, from scratch. And you've, you've consulted, you've advised a number of other businesses. Um, the, the, one of the things that, that's super powerful is that you've done this in less than three years each time. 
what types of companies, what types of services, if you don't mind sharing, does this include for you? Uh oh, we can't hear you, Troy. I think you're on mute. So there we go. We, um, we did T-shirts in the beginning, right? And that became hats, stickers, holographic, prismatic stickers in the '90s, the little oval ones. If you ever saw those, that was one of our things we did and our ideas. And we had racks of them, right? We made and then the web design. And then after that, owned a, a day spa um, at one time and built that up. And then uh, the last last two ones were these uh, class action settlement administration. Now we're going into other industries, corporate remediation. Summer may know about that with the banking industry and the remediation work. We're doing that, um, doing kind of like a lot of uh, other things with like mass tort, some bankruptcy stuff. Um, we built this huge legal tech platform to serve all these industries for mass outreach to people that are gonna file claims or process work or lean resolution work, right? Um, so we built this huge platform to start building and launching all these companies out of, right? Um, the last company we just started less than a little about two years ago now um, is called Balance Genics. Uh, because of my background with my dad, he helped grow a company called Metagenics and be, uh, it's one of the top nutraceuticals in the nation. A group of doctors all broke off, started and helped invest in something called Zymogen out of Orlando, where they've got hundreds of thousands of square feet of manufacturing and facilities now. And they were just this huge, super, super, one of the best supplement companies in the world. So we were able to find this guy, Glenn Depke, and, and he does all Dr. Mercola's products. And for people that know Mercola.com, um, and he ran Mercola's clinic. So he's architecting our product line. And now we're already at uh, at least about a $200,000 a month run rate on the supplement company already in less than two years. And by the end of this year, I think we'll hit five or six by the end of this year of 2021. Um, and it's and it, you've got to go through, it's the same. And this is what I was having this conversation with them. It's a formula. Mm. It is a very basic formula now for building a business. And, and the number one thing is we've got to change what we see in our minds, what we know, what we understand, our, our, our languaging, our activities throughout the day of manifesting something, right? So if you went through the other nine components and you went through the systems, you went through how to structure your business, but you got the, <clears throat> the QuickBooks or whatever accounting system you're using in the right order. So you can use that for your reports one day. You've got the yearly planning. You've got the quarterly planning. You've got the weekly meetings. You've got the daily huddles running. Like all these are very pragmatic things. It's just work. You know, are you putting goals down? Are you writing them down? Are you figuring out what are the action items I need to take every 90 days? You have this 10 year vision and you, and you plan in 90 day increments, you know, this, these impossible games for yourself. Like, how do I accomplish this next level? How do I do the work to get to this next thing? How do I, how do I wake up and like structure my day every day? So I have the energy I'm taking my supplements. I'm doing my veggie drinks. I'm, I'm getting enough sleep every night. I'm drinking enough water throughout the day. I'm making sure I get my meditation and like all these basics matter for building and running a company. And a lot of people say, no, I'm just going to do all this work and forget about my body, forget about my health, forget about reading stuff or learning stuff. I just got to focus and do this, do this, do this. And, and we get stuck in our minds of what's possible. And so when you apply all these things, if you've gone through all these courses already in the nine, these other nine videos and these other nine training sessions, and you've gone through and you've taken the notes and you look at your own business, say, okay, what must I do to change? Who must I become to accomplish this vision? What's lacking in me that I've got to really focus on and figure out what story am I telling myself in my mind in some area that's holding me back? You know, I'm not good enough. I'm not, I'm not talented enough. I'm not smart enough. I'm not, I'm not Troy. I'm not Summer. I'm not Margot. I don't have a tech background. I don't have that, 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 dot. And we got to get rid of these stories on a regular basis. We got to find tools and tactics to clear these BS stories that hold us back. And when we go through the system, we go through the books, buy, buy the book, Mastering the Rockefeller Habits, buy the book, Scaling Up, if you're running a business. These are like the the Bibles of running a business, basically. Everything you need to know is right there. The question is, are you gonna do the work? Are you gonna apply this stuff? Yeah. Are you gonna be able to, are you gonna wake up and, and have, have the plan to say, okay, I can't do everything this 90 days, but I can get through X. 
Mm. And stop wasting time. Don't care what the logo looks like. If it's not great, great. Who cares? If the name's not perfect, great. Go with it anyway. You know, because it, it's all about the vision behind it. It's all about what's the impact going to be long term. And are you willing to pay the price to achieve that? Because the only thing stopping you is you. The only thing stopping you is you. The only thing stopping me is me. And it's all right here. The games we play, like, man, is, is Netflix holding you back? Is food holding you back? Is some type of addiction holding you back? Some type of sedation holding you back? And, and this is the real world of business because the pressure is so enormous. It breaks us sometimes. And then everyone goes through the breaking process. And, they, and, they, and, and you kind of go through this humbling phase. Or you have a lot of success and then something happens and you go through another humbling phase. And those who have been through it a lot have been broken so many times over and over again that sooner or later you're like, okay, I know this just has to happen. And, and, and we have this mystery in our mind that we see these like Instagram posts of like these millionaires with fancy cars and fancy houses. And it, most people that are living that true life aren't dressing that nice, you know, and not a lot of them are blowing money on the fancy car, cars at a certain level, they are. I mean, there's a guy in Newport Beach that started with nothing. Um, he's built this amazing real estate empire, did all kinds of random businesses over the years. And he's got his huge car collection. And he, and he, and he literally started with nothing. Him and his, him, his uh, family, his mom and dad, they're all living in one hotel room at one time. And, and he just had that, he had, catch this, if you aren't from money, there's something called the gift of poverty the gift of not coming from wealth, the gift of not coming from money, the gift of not having so much stuff given to you that, that, it, that, it, that it allows you to do the work. You, you just become part of it. It's okay. You, you, don't, have any, you don't have any air about you. It's, just, it's okay if I clean the toilet. It's okay if I take out the trash. I've been my own janitor multiple times in the business mm -hmm. for many times. I did, and, and you're, you're okay cleaning the toilets when they overflow in the, in the entire office. And you have to tell people, yes, please come back to work. We have the carpets clean after the toilets overflowed. And these are true stories. Happened so many times in one of our buildings because it was like the final pipe of the whole office space before I went out to the system. And you just deal with this stuff, right? And, and this process is what builds us. So I'll let you keep going, Margo. No, I mean, you're you're right on it. And, and this is this is why I said this conversation is going to be a little bit different. Right. You know, we, we use that title um, sales consistency, but a lot of people don't understand that it's not about this it's not about that title like that's not the goal um you know yes the, you need to bring in revenue consistently daily right we need to do these things but there are certain habits there are certain beliefs there's cer certain tasks that you have to do consistently daily and that's where the result ends up being a consistency of sales and so you know, this is a very great, very perfect segue. You, you know, you mentioned it earlier, the tools, the tasks, the tactics, the tools, the tactics, and the techniques. I want us to really just go down because that's really the remainder of the questions that, that we have. Um, they center on habits, they center on mindset, they center on belief. So Troy, you talk about your background, your history. Um, you, you grew up in a family of entrepreneurs. Not everybody did. Right. And, and I don't want to assume so you can, you know, shed some light there. But let's talk to the people who may not have had um, a lot of finances to get started with their business. What are some mindset steps that that people can start to do to really dismantle the self defeating and limiting beliefs that they currently have. So I like a few things. So I got that view of what success looked like through my grandmother. She was actually became wealthy. I mean, she interviewed two presidents in their hotel rooms. She used to joke about it all the time. And it's funny when an 80 year old is telling these stories, I've been in the, in the, in the hotel room of two different presidents. She used to love to make that joke. And, and she wrote for the New Yorker and stuff. And yeah. so she had money It never really came to us, which was great. Like she was all about like, hey, go build your own thing. Yes. But what she did push was this. One thing she was all about was the dictionary and biographies. And the biographies give us the true story of other people and what their life looked like, at least from a book point. Mm. And I think that's a big deal is finding like 
people out there that you can relate to, like read the stories, read the books. Like you, you start like, and it becomes like, what made the great great? Like what made these people amazing? Why did they do it and not others? You know, where did they come from? What were their story? And when you start having all these reference points in your mind, you're able to say, oh, I can do this too. Like you hear these stories and it, and it helps stack your belief of what's possible for you. Mm. And I guarantee there's, there's someone that's done something great, no matter where you started from, no matter what environment, what country you come from, no matter what is your background, what you grew up in, it doesn't matter. There's someone that's done amazing things that started with probably less than you, probably a worse environment than you. So I think finding, finding these these stories, finding these biographies, you know, get the phone, buy the audible, start devouring biographies every, that you can relate to, finding stories you want to hear, right? That's number one, I think. It's, it's breaking through, what, of even your mind, what is possible. You know, I remember one time my dad, because my parents never made any money. My dad was more, he was more about saving the world and not making any money. I think my parents' best year together um, both working full time, my dad said we never made more than they never hit the hundred thousand mark. And, and this is a doctor with all these degrees. I mean, he would give away all these all these free services to people with autism, and and he worked with ADHD and people with lupus and cancer. And they came into his clinic dying on their deathbeds, and he would work with them people that couldn't move anymore that the medical community had given up on. And and he just and we were driving by um, the Fountain Blue Hotel. And he said, wow. that's where the rich people stay. And I remember him saying that. And I was like, I was like, oh, can we go stay there? Because it looked awesome at the time. And this was back 80s, early 80s, basically. And I remember actually sponsoring a conference there and had this amazing hotel room with this big booth. And we were like one of the main sponsors and going, okay, I've made it. I, I changed my mind. Wow. And I think a lot of you will have those moments if you're willing to do the work and pour into yourself and change your belief system, what's possible for you, like read these biographies, truly digest these stories inside of you and say, if that person can do it, I can do it. I will do today what others won't. So I can live tomorrow like others can't. I will do the work Every single day, I will do the work. A singles daily, singles daily, singles daily. Not hit home runs, not try to go for the home runs, but do the work daily, the singles daily. Get the sleep, drink the water, do the veggie drink, wake up every day, take the shower, brush your teeth, and then go to work. Get the workout in. Whatever it is for you that you architect that energizes you, feeds you, builds you up. So when you wake up, you're on fire. Because those biographies give you the belief what's possible for you and the vision then fuels your fire what you're going to do with all that belief system. And when we, when we dive into that belief system, we have that vision and we're taking the actions daily, the results will come. The results will come. I promise you, I promise you, I promise you. You get the sleep, you eat healthy, you do the workouts, you have the energy, the, the results will come. You start buying, go buy the Mastering the Rockefeller Habits. Go buy that book, Scaling Up. Read those, devour them. See what it takes to build the infrastructure of the business. There is so much free stuff out there of how to build a business now. But if you don't believe you can, you won't. And then the other book I suggest is kind of studying what Byron Katie wrote, right? There's a lady that wrote a book by, uh, called Loving What Is. And Byron Katie has all these questions that you ask yourself and say, what's the story you're telling yourself? And you could be like, like most of the people across the world, I'm not good enough. We can start with that one. And, and what she has in these questions is ways of reframing things. What's the opposite version? What's the desired version of what you want? And then she asks a question that's powerful and says, is it true? The story you're telling yourself, is it true that you're not good enough? Is it true that you don't have the resources? Is it true? And, and you kind of keep going down these questions and you're saying, okay, well, what do I want? What can I do? What is possible for me? And, and every time I guarantee you, you go through this exercise, you do the journaling, you get the journal, you write things out and, you, and you're clear on what you want. The ideas will flood your mind. You'll be like, oh, I can call and ask Margo something. I can Google something online. I can Google how to be a CEO. I can Google how do I have a quarterly planning? How do I run a monthly meeting? How do I have daily huddles? What type of metrics do I need? How do I deal with this tax issue? Because we're, we're, we're not in the information age anymore. We're in the application age. There is so much information out there. We need to grab it, get it, and apply it and do something with it and, and do the application stage to get what we want. 
And if you want to accomplish anything, you've got to read those biographies or have some, some way of taking, taking a reference point from somewhere and saying, I can do this. I can build this. I can grow and I can become this person to, to accomplish that vision that you're setting out for. So Mark, I'll give it back. This is, this is so, so much, it, this is a wealth of information. This is a wealth of knowledge. Again, the goal is to be able to apply some of these things today. And we're talking really heavily about mindset. I, I wanted to also share, you mentioned books. There is this really great book out there. Um, I happen to read it every day and it talks about the pride comes before the fall. Um, in other words, pride comes before destruction. And I will, I, I can speak to that. One of the things that I make sure to do, Troy, is I always like putting myself on the chopping block before asking people to do it because a lot of people aren't necessarily comfortable sharing their stories and where they're struggling and where they're gapped. Um, but there has been several experiences along my journey and I'm sure you can speak to this um, as well. So that'll be the next question I ask. But I wanna just share with uh, a few of you who aren't familiar with my story, who aren't familiar with my experience. Um, I. I, I struggled at, at certain points in my business to the point where I completely lost myself within my business. I was my brand 24 seven. I was a Margot at the time, brisky everywhere I went. And it got to a point where I couldn't see outside of the business. I was so focused. I was so um, immersed into the, the, the business that I wasn't uh, you know, paying, able to pay attention with what was going on in the world around me um, to the point where um, it really, I, 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 I took a fall and it was really, really hard where um, finances were still coming in. But I, again, I was just so stuck just on that hamster wheel with business, 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 business. I really wasn't making as much impact because I wasn't doing life with people. And, and I, I'm bringing this up because again, what is the goal? What is your mission? And I really want you to, keep, I, I want to stress this because I remember when I first started the business, I said, um, it was a prayer and I was just like, I want to make a, an impact in the life of at least one person. Now, if you start a business, you're likely going to impact more than one person, but that was really my goal. It was super simple. I said, I want to transform the life of at least one person. And years later, I was brought back to the memory of my very first event. It was a year after the, we had been in business, our first year anniversary. And my, my very first client gave a testimonial um, pretty much on the stage of the platform. And she says, um, you know, this is what we did together. This was the experience. But I have to say, Margo completely transformed my life. And it, it, I, I just was completely mind blown because this person wasn't there when I delivered that prayer. And she said exactly what my mission or what my goal was. And for me, when I remembered this, that's what gave me a sense of peace. And that's what shifted for me when I started pursuing the, the, the next goal, the next vision was to just continue to make the impact. And I knew that abundance and prosperity was going to come by result of me just focusing on the mission of serving people well. And, you know, and I don't want to say this as if it's fluff. This is really what had to happen and really what had to change. Because again, I was focusing for a long period of time on just making money, making money, making money, making money. And I wasn't focusing on the main mission. And so I just want to remind people to, yes, it's great. To, it's important to have these goals to know where you're going. But I also want to take a moment to talk about reverse engineering your process. When you have that goal in mind, begin to break that down. And, and what I mean by this is, let's say you have a 12 year goal, 12 year, a 12 month goal. Identify what, it, what you need to be doing each quarter. What do you need to be doing each month? What do you need to be doing each week, each day? And then from there, Choice mentioned this, and I do the same thing. I structure the hours of my day to a T, meaning you do not, my household knows, do not talk to me at all. Don't ask me for anything. If the baby cries, we got bottles in the fridge for a reason. From 4.30 a.m. to 7.30 a.m., that is my time to recalibrate and just center myself on what I need to do. Throughout the rest of the day, there's specific things. Um, there's days geared toward um, professional development. My Monday, I don't do anything with my clients. That is professional development where I'm reading, I'm studying, I'm researching, I'm learning. 
And then throughout the day on, um, I, or throughout that continued day, I'm really gearing it toward, um, you know, if it's the professional development day, there's, that's really all it is. But then the days where um, we're looking at clients on Tuesdays, Thursdays, that's really what I'm doing. But I'm also prepping for the following client day. Wednesdays, it's geared toward um, any, I guess, get to know you days where I'm still networking and collaborating with people. But that is another date where it's specifically where my team is sending out pitches for me to speak, for me to wor work with um, other on tra training and development programs and things of that nature. And I'm, I'm sharing what we do because that's our strategy and that's our approach, but we have the specific goal that we're after. We have to make sure that we are um, uh, to breaking it down to a point that's digestible and we are not overworking ourselves because that is one of the things that we see is burnout. When again, we are just after the money or we're after something um, that is not uh, in alignment with the main mission we end up achieving burnout. And so I share that to kind of segue into another point back to um, you, Troy. You made the, the Inc. 500 list. And I just wanna share, if no one's ever researched this, if no one's ever looked it up, one of the things, one of the requirements is made a million dollars in three years, Troy. You can talk more about what those other requirements are if you choose, but I want you to talk about your journey, the mission, the process to achieve this goal of making the Inc. 500 list, but talk about that process, talk about the journey and what was on the other end of that once you met your goal. So there's the good and the bad at the end, which is pretty funny. Um, so I'm, I'll just tell one story of a growth company um, and we'll do the last company. The one before that, we did the same thing. Um, grew, like, I mean, we did 3,000 in sales our first year, 352. Uh, the second, third year was like 1.8. 10 months into the fourth year, we hit almost 4.8 into the fourth year. Uh, this last company, we were able to start off and kind of build it up. So, I think I want to talk about the process and first the qualifications I think 500 for those who want to know because there can be nonprofits in this too. There can be coaching companies. There can be anything. You have to do $101,000 in year one, whatever that is for you of, of the qualification. You finally hit over 101. The difference is between year one, whatever that is, your, whatever that you'd be 10 years in business and have that be your first year, whatever, it doesn't matter. The difference over the next three years and the fourth year is your qualifier year of what growth is basically, right? Mm -hmm. So, and that's what people are looking at a, over, over a three-year growth period. What does that look like? Um, I think the new management team of some players will probably be on the list again. What they're doing, what they're accomplishing, what they're putting in place. The, uh, the We have an elite management team right now that's just going to scale this thing. And I probably will actually be involved at all like much. I mean, it's it's very interesting to build something and then let, uh, have someone else run it, you yeah. know, and run and grow an organization after you because there's certain skill sets we have or don't have what we're built for, right? Again, it's identifying what we're good at. And that's part of that process. Hopefully that was one of the courses you guys have gone or you've studied yourself in some way. What am I actually good at? Yep, I'll so <laughs> so I, I started the company. I was living in one place. I got lucky enough to have a, like I sold a building, I sold a house, was able to live in this like, attachment portion of the house for one year and literally just worked day and night. I mean, and sales consistency was like literally how to start from scratch. Couldn't target to any of the other customers we ever worked with. We had to go from scratch. So my sales to market plan, we were broke. I mean, within 60 days, we were pretty much broke. All the money I had went to phone systems, servers, building, basic setup. And I was already like pretty much almost broke out of money. And we were just trying to get the business going, get sales in door. So one of the guys that kind of helped start the company, uh, like he came in about, you know, 60 days later, I'd, I'd waited tables with him. We worked together in the past. He was Armenian. His mom could make baklava. So he's like, well, my mom can make baklava really cheap. And I was like, okay, great. We'll try it. So we literally bought clear plastic plates, wrap and blue ribbon. And his mom would make baklava every night. We'd pick it up. Uh, we'd package it up. And then, you know, early, early, early in the morning, and then we played it. And by 7 a.m., we were on the road and we'd go see probably 10 locations every day with two attorneys, 
every location, right? That was it because you can't over inundate people. And we'd have a little card attached to it with a business card. And we'd have a little handwritten card attached to it with another little ribbon. And we would just drop it off and say, hi, my name is Troy. I just would love that opportunity to bid on your next case. And that was like this go-to market plan, nothing brilliant. Our folders, we had printed out of a black and white printer on cheap white folders. And we double taped our business card because on the back of it had our logo. We couldn't even afford to get things printed. Um, we were that broke. And then we kind of kind of bought a color printer. We'd print one brochure at a time with a little color printer. And we would drop that. And then we'd mail that to them or drop it off at the box. Blah, blah, then follow up with a phone call and follow up with the email. And, and they, didn't try to, they didn't contact again. Well, three months later, we were dropping some other thing off, which was Krispy Kreme donuts. And open it up. And inside with a sign with our logo, say, we'd love to build, bid on your next class action case. Yeah. Simple marketing. Trying to follow up. And you know, have that list, go to the conferences. When we show up, we'd have the target list of who we dropped something off. Hi, I just want to finally introduce myself. I've dropped off baklava, I've dropped off donuts and shake their hands. Mm -hmm. And that's how we got business in the door. That's how we started. It was literally nothing, but going online, finding a list of people and just saying, hi, hi, my name's Troy. Nice to meet you. And we did this over and over again. So that's where it started. And it just increased rapidly, right? The challenge was though, you're constantly, when you're building something and you don't have anybody coaching you and you don't have anybody pouring into you and you don't have the type of information Margo's teaching you and she's pouring into you and she's got this passion to give you everything she ever learned or seen and dumping it inside of you. When you don't have people like that, we get stuck in our minds where we just go, oh crap, I gotta wake up and I just gotta grab coffee and nothing else. I gotta shoot straight to the office. I just gotta go to work. I gotta go to work. I gotta go to work. Next thing you know, you're around you're eating bad habits, you're broke. You're like, okay, 99 cent menu, burger. Yes, that's me, boom, grabbing the burger. And you get so broke and you're just trying to save money. And then you're sedating with like, oh, let me just grab a Coke, it feels good right now. And all these little things start stacking. So by the time I made the Inc. 500 list, I'm sitting at the conference, burnout, 300 pounds, testosterone down to 100. What? And I can even say more, but I think we're on a business call, but my <laughs> body was fried. Wow. Like literally fried. Oh my um, could, almost within six months after that, I almost couldn't even get out of bed. I was that burnout. Um, mm -hmm. Put two people in charge, a CFO and a CO, try to run it more. And I was still showing up, but I mean, I was burnt out. And I had to spend years literally figuring out how do I change my body? How do I, I get diagnosed with something where the adrenals don't work anymore at all. And they had complete adrenal fatigue and adrenal shutdown. So the energy just wasn't there. And I had to go through all these natural health steps. And I had to go through all these, all these transformational stuff mentally because the, the, the problems you deal with, the angry customer, screwing up jobs where you lose 300,000 in one job, screwing something up. And, and the problems were constantly people getting in fights in the hallway because we grew so fast. I didn't know the right things to build in the business wow. from the beginning. And that's where my passion is so high to say, what can I give you people that are entrepreneurs to pour into them of the things I found? I spent hundreds and hundreds and hundreds, probably over a million dollar plus in coaching and programs and finding the mentors and the personal development stuff and the, and the transformational mindset stuff and, the, and all the things I had to do to get to the point where I'm at today. Mm. And imagine like not being able to get out of bed. Imagine 300 pounds, like I'm probably two, 220 now. And, and you know, it's just, you, you're just fried. See, that's why I talk so much about having the vision and also applying the daily habits, the, the veggie drinks, the sleep, the water, and, and also you have even more energy to accomplish even more things, even faster by not sacrificing your health, not sacrificing your mindset, doing the Byron Katie journaling, getting clear why this trigger, why are you getting mad? Why are you getting upset? Why are you getting sad? Why are you getting depressed? Because these things are going to come. You're going to get attacked by these things. You're going to get, you're going to feel the emotion, the anger, the sadness, the defeat, depression. How do you change that story and change it quick? How do we get out of our phone quicker so we can impact more people? Because you're the leader. Mm. You're the leader. The leader of one is the leader of many. You can't lead one. You can't lead any. Who's the one? You're the one. That's right. And we're leaders, not saviors. We're leaders, not saviors. We're leaders, not saviors. And I still am trying to learn these lessons. These are still things I'm trying to learn and apply to my life on a consistent basis. 
like I'm, I'm always trying to save people my, and like yeah. and I and that calls me problems in business yes I'm not running at the HR the way I should sometimes I'm not running I'm, 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 I'm caretaking people when I shouldn't Ugh. you know I didn't take I didn't take care of myself but I'll caretake somebody else and, and these are these things that just show up in our in our lives of who are we right and we have to kind of figure out how do we run the organization better and that's why I challenge you today to really get clear on what you're doing to take care of you, to energize you, so you don't end burnt up at the end of it. Like, we were on Inc. 500 a couple of years in a row. It was great to be at the conference. It was, like, the highlight. Like, I saw the magazine when I was, like, 16, 17 years old in this, like, entrepreneur thing in high school. And I was like, oh, I want to be on that. And we were in the top 200 fastest growing companies one year in America, and out of like 6.5 million companies, we were in the top 200. Mm-hmm. And, and you, you pay a price if you don't do everything right. Mm. And that's why Margo and I are pouring into you. That's why we're, 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 we're trying to give you everything we've got. And even hopefully, Margo, we can, get, we can give maybe some people here some accesses and things for free even yep. to, help them, to, help them, to help you go. And, if, and please feel free to reach out to me if you are depressed, if you feel burnt out, if you feel like you can't keep going anymore. Call me, text me, but there. I want to see you succeed. Mm-hmm. We don't need entrepreneurs burning out anymore. Come on. We don't need another person tapping out because of the pressure is so high. And it does grow and it is intense. But there are people that are believing you, that are here for you. Like reach out to Margo and I. We will help support you. We will help guide you. We will pour into you in your darkest days because we know the great potential that's latent inside of you. We know that you have a vision, that you're called for something greater. And we will give and serve you at the highest capacity to get you to that vision and pour into your hearts, mind, and souls so you lead people at the next level. You pour into people. That you're the person on these conference calls pouring into the next generation, the next generation, the next generation, and we're able to uplift this country again, get it out of the all these failing businesses, get out of the doom and gloom that we're facing as a country and a world right now. We need you to succeed. We need you to be the, your best version of you. We need you to rise like you've never risen before. We need you to live your gift, your talent, your vision. And you don't think, if you think we're full of it, please call, please reach out, please text. We'll spend hours on the phone with you. I just had some incredibly tough conversations with different people that are burnout, that don't want to keep running their organization. They paid the price. They were at where I was at. And, and sometimes we just need that word. We need some guidance. We need someone to say, I'm in your corner and I can do this with you. Yeah. And you can build the great companies. You can be the next success story. You can be on the Inc. 500. You've got it. Any, you've got it within you. If you're on this call or watching this, there's something inside of you saying, I'm called for more. I can do more. I'm built for more. And Margo and I will be here for you. I guarantee it. Please reach out. So back to you, Margo. Man, Troy, like I feel it. Like I have the chills. I feel it in my spirit. I feel it in my soul, man. Like this is, this is, the bread and butter of what we do and why we do it and the beautiful thing is summer does it too she has a bit she has multiple businesses and she navigates the corporate space because she understands every single thing we're talking about and i think it's so monumentally important i'm going to share it now completely not even a shameless plug and i try my best to keep discover her and um um a and b consulting and company separate but this the everything that you're talking about right now troy everything that he's talking about right now um founders all of you who are tuning in um this is why we do what we do through both Discover Her as well as through AMB Consulting because we realize that there are founders who have been DIYing themselves to exhaustion. We realize that there are event creators who don't have a team, who aren't operating with a budget, who really don't have the resources, who are completely self-funding their own programs simply because they are not asking for other people to be a part of their process. There are subject matter experts who are, are 
not collaborating with people within their industry because of pride, because of ego, and they are not making impact in the lives of those they're called to lead. That is why I finally said, okay, we're not just going to continue to do these, uh, these segments, which are great, which are transformational. We at AMB Consulting and Company, we decided to put together a program called Profitable Founder. And yes, again, people, uh, some people are, are just after the profits, but we are focusing on on introducing or implementing teaching founders how to implement kingdom principles into their business so that they can establish work-life harmony and what that looks like it's focusing on making greater impact it focuses on becoming profitable as well as it focuses on establishing work-life harmony and so that's what we're doing and the funny thing is again everything that you're talking about Troy when you get to a certain place you're not just focused on the money we did, we did a private launch. We didn't even tell the, well, now I'm telling the community, so y'all know now, but we didn't put this out to the public saying, hey, y'all come and join this program. We just started reaching out to people and saying, hey, this is what we're doing. We see you, this is like, respectfully, would you be you know open for me to share these things and they said yes that's when we started saying like hey you're gapped in this area this program is this is what we respond to we look at these three core areas self-development for founders this um the fundamentals for business owners as well as strategic partnerships if this is something that you want here's the program and guess what this is what it, the this is the the tuition for this particular program we do we're running it as a cohort we start this time sign up that was it. It wasn't a crazy marketing strategy. We didn't do a ton of ads. Like that wasn't the goal. And we are making greater impact through that approach than all of this, again, burning out, trying to figure out the latest sales strategy and the, the how to incorporate the ads and do all of these things. We just said, okay, hey, who do we know who do because we, we can watch we can just look at this pe these people who need the services that we provide and just reach out to them slide into the dm and shoot your shot and watch watch how you how many but how you transform the lives of others and so again for those of you who are listening we are we are almost at the end of this but again you know we kept saying if you have questions ask Troy you know we'll leave it um, as I'm wrapping up we'll give you the opportunity um, to ask some questions this is why we always encourage you to join us live because the people who are with us live can pop themselves off mute and just go ahead and ask the question so um, Sharika Kimberly go ahead and you know get your for the rest of you go ahead and get your questions ready but again Troy I just have to thank you so much for for just pouring out um, and just being present with us to day for this conversation and again this conversation is around sales consistency but the beautiful thing is that's not the end result that's that's not the goal it focuses and it starts with our mindset it's about our beliefs and it's about our habits that each align with achieving the vision and if we don't have those things in order we are not going to achieve the vision that has been given and understand Troy said it I'm going to reinforce this because for those of you who have been connected to me for any period of time you know I say this you have everything you need inside of you you have to just tap in for those of you who are believers that can be found in first peter 3 1 3 and again it's it's true it's there you have this information just make sure that you are connecting with the people um who are in your circle it's one of the things that we teach is leveraging your professional assets it's your network it's your resources it's looking at what you bring to the table already and just making sure that as you're looking to serve people that you are connecting with other people to do so as well because we're not meant to operate in a silo and so again troy um, i'm gonna go ahead and post your contact information um both here as well as facebook um connect and reach out to troy um there are so many details. I'm, I'm Troy. I'm posting the the hatch challenge as well as I'm posting another resource. Um, it's a PDF. So go ahead and um, and just share a little bit about that. And and again, I'm posting it. But please tell people where they can connect with you um, so that they can get some additional resources from you. So we've got the hatch challenge that we're going to post to people, which is like a, we did this five day challenge. We've got a great video series where we've been selling it online, Facebook and Instagram and. Uh, I think we're Aaron, Aaron, who runs the whole TroyHoffman.com world uh, and Hatch world, 
um, he he wanted to give all this away and um, and also the PDF actually Aaron put together from all the different questions and all the stuff from the Hatch program. We got this huge 40 day program where every day you go through different aspects of running your business, which is really in depth. And it's a good starter in depth of kind of hitting all the things about people and process and sales and systems and personal development and diving deeper into what we just talked about, right? So that way you can really take action on things and all the questions. A lot of it's questions. Um, you've got to you've got to have someone asking you the right questions to get you clear. There's information, and then there's getting clear and like what you're going to do with it, how are you going to do it, what what do you want to do? And there's a lot of things in that PDF that are going to help you build your business. It's like a lot of the core components, things you need to apply, thing action steps and questions. So that way, it's like literally you can print it out. Um, it's online. It's Aaron did an amazing job putting it together with all the pictures. It makes it looks cool and it's fun and easy to read. And just going through that, it's only like 37 pages, but it is so in depth and there's so much condensed information and things you have to apply in your life. And you kind of go through and say, am I doing this? Yes or no. Where, where do I need to add? Where do I need to subtract from my business? Where am I, how am I actually running my operation? Am I doing these things in my life? Yes or no. Um, and then questions for yourself. So this is all free to you guys. I mean, I am, I am hundred percent behind you and build, helping you build what your dream is, your vision specifically. So those are those programs. Um, you can follow me on Facebook. There's Troy I Hoffman, um, uh, Troy Hoffman, and then at Hoffman Troy on uh, link, uh, uh, Instagram and then LinkedIn. There's Troy Hoffman on there too. So I'm pretty easy to find. If you Google me, there's a lot out there um, and please feel free to reach out. And if I don't respond to some, venue or something you get a hold of me um just contact me directly on my cell phone please you know get a hold of me so uh and it's out there too it's easy to find margo all you and again thank you yeah no this is great thank you so much troy for for everything again for joining the conversation um we are going to take a couple seconds i know some people want to share some things with you troy and just express their gratitude for this conversation so i'm going to let them pop themselves off mute but before we do that i just want to um thank everyone who's tuned in so far um and who is watching the replay um these trainings are so transformational. They have helped tons of business owners um, really get clear on where they're gapped. And as we say, our, our mission, our goal is to give you tangible insights and resources and tools that you can apply to your business immediately. It's not you listen to this and you have to go and read 60 other textbooks or invest hundreds of thousands of dollars like many of us have. You can take what we're talking about for free and what we're teaching you and apply these things to your business you just have to be willing to do the work because we are not here to do the work for you and 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 as a final reminder we have two more powerful conversations following um this particular segment as well as well we are still taking submissions for the nonprofit pitch competition. So if you are a founder, if you know a founder who has a nonprofit organization, go over to discoverher.org and look at all of the details. Please read all of the details before you submit. Read all of the details for the, uh, the pitch competition because Comerica not only is sponsoring these, these 12 biweekly workshops, Comerica is also sponsoring a $1,000 cash prize to a founder um, of the nonprofit pitch competition. So we want to give this away. It, we're, we're here, like we're, This is all we're doing. We're here to just give this away, to give these resources and tools, these lessons um, away to you. So again, if you know a founder, share this with them, tag them in the video. Um, and again, we're here to support you um, along your process and through your journey. And so um, we just want to take some time. Go ahead and unmute yourself. Just share today your major takeaway. For those of you who are tuning in on Facebook, go ahead and just drop what was a major lesson, what was a major takeaway. And um, again, Troy, thank you. Thank you so much. Sharika, go ahead and you can pop yourself off mute first. Oh, first, I want to say thank you. And it's always good to hear something that you've been thinking in the sense of um, in the, running my nonprofit and the things that I do and 2020 has been a challenge, but I've had to get comfortable with people knowing my name. Like I like to do my job and do and provide the services. 
that I provide because I know, as I, as I say, sometimes I'm a background girl. Like you don't need to know who I am for me to get the job done, but because it's my organization, I have to get comfortable and I'm getting comfortable with being the face in the conversation and still doing the work. And I used to be, um, I used to say, I don't want people to talk about me, but in actuality, you do want people to talk about you because if they're talking about you and your business, that means you're doing something right. In a sense of, I've noticed that we've become the go-to organization for STEM organization or STEM programming for reaching out. And so I'm getting comfortable with that. And so a lot of what you were saying, Troy, is that work is I've been doing the work. You know, Future Stars is 12 years old. And we're now starting to make our imprint in the community and be that organization. And I am slowly getting comfortable with it and doing the work. And so everything you were saying is just like right on. Like, yeah, when you do the work, people will recognize you and you don't need to self-promote in the sense. Um, but I do like your your thing of you don't have to hit a home run every time, like mm. single. And then after some singles, you'll get your double and you'll get your triple. I do love that baseball analogy because I am a sports person. So I do appreciate that. Um, and then the other one of you can't lead other people if you don't know how to lead yourself. That is such a good adage. So thank you for everything that those are my little takeaways that I wrote down that I will definitely be um, implementing and thinking about those just when I get frustrated with myself that I haven't hit that home run and be like, but you never hit the double, you never hit the single. First. Let's work on the single before you hit the home run. So that's good. I appreciate you for that. Thank you. Mm -hmm. That's beautiful. That's beautiful, Sharika. Thank you for sharing that. Kimberly, go ahead. You can go ahead and pop yourself off mute. Your major takeaways, ma'am. Hey, as always, you know, I love this series and I'm so thankful you guys are doing it because it's really making us, after so many years of already being in service, it's really making us take a hard look at what we're doing right and what we're doing wrong. Um, and I agree with everything she just said as well. You know, if you get on yourself really hard when you don't feel like things are going your way and you don't realize that it's okay for you to get the nose and it's okay for things not to always work your way. It's going to come around. You just have to really work on it. Um, so I, again, just thank you for this because it's just making us more knowledgeable and it's making us really see where our failures are. And once we um, can look at those failures and really start to correct them, then that's how we become more successful because we're really working on what needs to be worked on. So thank you. Perfect. Thank you so much. And so Summer, Troy, I just want you to just share one, just one more. I mean, you, Troy, you, you pretty much dominated the conversation and, and gave so much wisdom, but what is one thing if they, if people didn't listen, which I know they did because we have high expectations for our listeners, but if one thing that, that you would want the audience to leave with from this conversation, what would that be? I'm going to give a shout out to Summer and Co-America Bank. First, um, they were involved with the different co uh, entrepreneur community through some other areas through i don't know i never met summer till today but i can't wait to meet you summer actually and like talk to you like i, I haven't summer's been so quiet and just sitting there so perfectly still it's amazing the whole time um can't wait to talk to you summer just in general and say hi and learn more about you but co america bank's a great bank um they've been involved in the entrepreneur space in big ways in different areas i, I only know of the uh, los angeles um Los Angeles area of the Co America Bank and what they've done in there, and different friends of mine that are involved in um, the entrepreneur community and running different organizations have worked with them, got the loans from, done a lot of banking with them. They really work in depth, a lot more in depth than a lot of some of the other banks. And I'm sure some of you on here may have experienced larger banks not servicing clients quite so well during the last things that have occurred. So that's all I'll say. But Co America has done a fantastic job in in that space. So if you, I just want to say, find a good business bank too, with people that will work with you. It's, it's incredible how much we actually work with the banks to the point, like one of the banks we work with, like I, I go to a lunch or dinner at least once 
to twice a year with the owner or founder of the bank, right? Mm -hmm. um, we've known the founders of the other banks we've worked with or are deeply involved with the CEO, the major branch managers of the other banks we work with, right? Um, it's incredibly important to have those relationships first off and have people that really understand your, your needs. And, and it, it sounds like a kind of a, a sales pitch, but when you get to run a large organization, you'll understand what I'm saying. Trust me, it, it does pay off down the road and they can help guide you on thoughts and processes that you wouldn't have thought about. So um, that's one thing I would definitely talk about since Summer's on this and Co-America is a sponsor. And they didn't tell me to say anything or not, guys, by the way. Um, this is just my personal experience share. Um, and then to leave with, um, find, 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 your, find your tribe of people that are going to pour into you. You're, one way or another, you're gonna. You need to hear this something, something else. Go, go, keep developing those those teammates that are gonna be the resource, the text, the call, the the person that's gonna be there when all crap goes wrong. You know, who 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 is your legal counsel? Who is your CPA? Who is your who who are your friends that you're actually hanging out with? Like, hang out with the people that are building something. Like, you know, my high school friends. Some of them can't probably relate to the conversations I have. On entrepreneurship it's just a different world right and and it's not good or bad it's just different and find your tribes of people that you can learn from soak up support them like find people that you can give to even like and you're already running nonprofits, but in in the leadership entrepreneur nonprofit space like be the encourager because when you're encouraging them you're even more inspired yeah and i would say find your tribe so thank you margo Thank you so much. Summer, do you have anything else you want to add? You know what? Everything that Troy has said is, is really on point when it comes to um, kind of self. I mean, uh, and I'll speak briefly because we have a few more moments, but, and, and no, no one paid Troy or told Troy. He's never worked with me. He's probably worked with my colleagues in California. Um, and you've probably worked with Larry or <laughs> or David or Sonia, they're my colleagues in Arizona or California that do what I do here. And we are we we work for the community, but we are a business bank, and and that is certainly what why we strive for for helping businesses, um, especially during this time. But when I was thinking, I was listening to Troy, um, and I'm doing a few things at the same time. So I do apologize if you see my saw my eyes shift uh, a few times. I have like three computers going on at one time, um, but. It's just, I was just like, he must be like in the church. He must be an evangelist. He must be a pastor on his own time or something because that is just, it's really the information he's giving is internal. Yep. It's deep. Um, as long as you figure out yourself, you can do so many different things. And those are the things people used to tell you, you know, when you're a kid, like you can do anything you ever wanted to. You're, you're amazing. You, you know, you have the world in front of you and you still have the world in front of you. You just have to kind of guide it and shift it in the right direction. And if you, if you talk to anybody, everyone has a story, but certain successes depend on how you apply that story to your future. I mean, you, you, you're going to have something that happens to you or that has happened from, you know, happened to you in the past, but how are we learning from them and how are we moving from them? Troy gave you a ton of background and then he's telling you what he's doing now. And, and that's a success story. That, that's those, those are those stories that you can't, you can't pay for. You, you know, you can't earn a degree in. That's something that you learned and nobody can take away from you and that you can apply it. So everyone's gone through so many different things in their lives. They've had, so I can, I can guarantee you that if you're at the age of 40, you've had at least 25 different situations that happened to you that you can apply to yourself now. And that is exactly what Troy is explaining. Um, earning money, understanding how to do sales. Those are things you can pick up in the book. Those are things you can get mentors and coaches for. But the passion, the drive that you have that is, that's where your, 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 your foundation really comes from. And I'll just make one more point of um, kind of what Troy said as well is for our success. And when I say our, I'm talking about my family. Um, a lot of what we do is based on each other. If I didn't have my family there, I would not be where I am. If, if I didn't have um, the, the support or the, the people telling me, uh, you know, who do you think you are? Like someone putting in me in my place that that is what I need sometimes that, and they're there to do it. And I literally, I moved on the same block as my family. We all live next door to each other. We can buy bigger houses. We can go somewhere else, but what do we stay close to each other? And that, that is, that helps keep us to survive. That keeps us as entrepreneurs. We are an entrepreneurial family. 
Um, but we all have different different things that we feed off of each other. And I definitely, it's necessary in order to succeed. You have to keep the people around you close and you have to know that, you know, if anyone's struggling, you're there to help. If, if anyone's su- being a success in their in their life, you're there to applaud them. You're there to, you know, say, I'm so proud of you. This is exactly why we're here. They're, I mean, the greatness that they can do is the greatness that you can do. The greatness that you can do is the greatness that they can do. So if you're working in, in tandem with the people that support you, you'll continue to rise and you'll continue to grow. So it, it's so many different things based off of what Troy says is a deeper, deeper uh, penetration opposed to just knowing your P&Ls, knowing your budget, knowing how to hire a CPA, knowing, you know, all the basics of what I can tell you. But like I said, he came in and he was unfiltered, unapologetic as well as to what you need to do to be successful, whether it's in business, whether it's a nonprofit, whether it's in life, whether it's in relationships, everything that he stated actually applies to who you are as a person. So thank you very much, Troy, for uh, allowing us to be here and, and, and hosting with Margo. Thank you. Absolutely. And I was trying to do it. I don't know if I want to, I, I, I want to, again, just to, to express how grateful we are. And um, I do have to take another second to shout out Summer. I hopefully it's showing. I know we can see it on Zoom. Um, Troy, you didn't know this happened. I didn't know it happened like right before this call. I don't know if it's going to share on um, Facebook as well, but nonetheless, we actually definitely have to thank Summer um, and just again, the whole Comerica team because of them, because of this, I guess even my yes. So I, again, I will sh- like show my pom-poms too. We were, have been featured in the Arizona informant um, as of Wednesday. And Troy, your beautiful face is there alongside us. Um, and so again, thank you so much Comerica for taking the time to really, again, be part of the vision, to be part of the process. And again, this is incredible that um, the city of Arizona, the city of Arizona, the city of Phoenix is, is acknowledging and recognizing our work for the impact we are making in the community. And so again, I just had to take a moment. I'm like, look, we got a feature. We got another feature, you guys. And so again, this isn't something that's new to me, but this is a really, really big deal because it started just again, just the last thing I want to share with you, what you are seeing here, if you, for those of you who have been tuning in for every single segment, you are troopers, you are veterans of the bootcamp series, but I want to be very clear on what this is. I posted a post on Instagram. No, it started as a comment on somebody else's page on Instagram. I took it and repurposed that content. Some saw it and she was like, hey, you should do a workshop. And I was like, ha ha, only if you sponsor. And she said, call me. And now we're here. That is literally what happened. And so I want to, I cannot express to you enough shoot your shot, invest, show up and make your impact because there are so many people who are waiting for you and what you have to share with them. And so again, this is something just that I I just had to share at the end. I didn't want to share it at the beginning, but again, Summer, thank you so much, Troy. Thank you so much for being part of this conversation, for being part of the process and for every other person who is tuning in, for all of you founders, Here's another challenge for you. Um, it's not a challenge, it should be super simple. If you receive, I know you receive something, but for those of you who receive something from today's se- session, from today's segment, go ahead and tag another founder, invite them. Um, by the end of today, you will be able to register for the next segment, which is on partnerships, strategic partnerships and collaboration. Um, and that is the second to last segment for this particular series. We are here, we are providing this information to you free of charge. Um, and so again, just make sure you connect and reach out to Troy, attend and participate in that hatch challenge. Also grab that uh, PDF. It is a ton of great information um, that is within that document as well continue to invest in you, understand that when you show up for you um, and invest into yourself, you are not just doing that for you, you are doing it for the people who are called to do life with you. So thank you so much. This is another segment of the Comerica Business Bootcamp series. Until next time, let's continue making an impact. Be well and blessings.